Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plan Obsessed, and uh, today I'm starting a new series for new worm farmers. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions from people that are brand new, they want to start, they want to get going, and um, so I'm going to start back at the beginning because a lot of times, you know, when I'm looking at my videos and I'm talking to people, much of the time I'm talking to people who already have bins and already know the basics, but you know, that's not everybody. Not everybody has the basics yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a brand new bin and tell you everything you're going to need. So what I have here is a bus bin that I got off of Amazon um, and it's 16 inches. Well, I guess if you go on the inside, it's 14 and a half inches by 21 and a half inches by six inches deep, give or take. I'll, I'll put the um, metric translations in there afterwards when I'm editing. So first thing you need to do is you need to get some bedding. Um, of course, whatever you have available is what is important. I'm going to put in uh, some of my prepared bedding. But, um, and you can see a video about that as well, but I'm going to just start out with a layer here on the bottom of shredded cardboard that is damp. Um, I've already got my eggshell in there. I'm going to give them a handful of coconut core. Um, you don't need this, it just helps with the texture of the process. So this is coconut core that is, um, I also purchase on Amazon. But you can use leaves, you can use cardboard shreds, you can shred them by hand if you want to, if you don't have a shredder that's capable of doing boxes. Um, I use my junk mail, my food boxes, as well as my Amazon boxes, um, and, you know, coffee filters. So putting that little bit of cocoa peat or peat in there will keep the fibers apart from each other so you don't end up with clumps of um, paper like this. It's just difficult to manage and you know it doesn't break down as fast because air can't get between there. So first you put in your bedding. Um, this has been aged uh, for a couple of weeks so it is sufficient. Now I make this with a little bit of a nitrogen compound which in my case is kelp meal but you can use coffee grounds. Um, you could use a little bit of um, oatmeal, cornmeal, just something to give the microbes something to get started on to start breaking down the bedding before you put the worms in. Because you want them to have some place that's nice and comfy, comfy, and in the case of worms, comfy means not sterile. Um, so if you don't have access to somebody else with a worm bin, um, then what you're going to want to do is what I first did to get my beneficial microbes which is to, I just went underneath my oak tree, um, moved over some of the mulch, and scraped up about a cup of soil. Now some people will argue this is not necessary, or maybe even some people might argue it's a bad idea, but this is what I personally did and I have been successful. So I can't say that this is, you know, God's, you know, commandments on worm bins. What I can say is I did it and I was successful. So for this bin, what I've done is I've handpicked about a half a pound of worms, out of my other bin. Um, for this size bin, I think that's enough to start with. Um, you're not going to be able to get rid of all of your family scraps in this size of a bin, but that will come later. Put everything in the freezer and uh, they'll eat it eventually. Sorry for the laundry in the background. So what I have is what I will affectionately call my Uncle Jim's mix because that's literally what happened. I ordered red wigglers and European night crawlers and I also got some blue worms. But for me, I'm composting things. I'm not breeding for anything. I'm very simply trying to get them to eat my food scraps. So to me, it doesn't matter what breed of worms there are. But if you look at my hand here, I've got red wigglers, I've got European night crawlers, and that might be a blue worm and it might be a European or might be a red wiggler. It's hard to tell. Usually if they're moving really fast, it's a blue worm. Um, hard to say. I really, I mean, seriously, unless you put them under, um, get a good still picture of them and count 
the clitellum uh, rings. So um, when I'm talking about that, if let me see if I've got a good picture of this. This raised part here is the clitellum, so I know this in particular is a red wiggler. The blue worms do not have one that's raised like that, uh, and that's how you can tell them apart when they're mature. When they're not mature, you're not probably going to be able to tell them apart. But if you've got a really good close picture, and you can see he's sticking his nose out here, if you count the rings or the segments between their nose and their clitellum and count them, then you will know what kind of worm you have. Um, you can look that up, Google it, what have you. There's a lot of resources that will tell you what kind of worm you have. But for my purposes, it doesn't matter. Um, so what I had there was about half of that full of castings and half of it full of worms. And then I'm just going to incorporate that all together to get them mixed up. Um, you don't really even need to do that. But my goal of mixing it up is to get the castings um, if you have them available. If you buy worms from somebody, odds are you will get some castings from them and you will have your beneficial microbes in that case. Um, so that is all you have to do is you just need something as simple as a, I don't know, this was six or seven dollars and um, and whatever's cheap, you know, Walmart, dollar store, you can get some kind of a bin, like a wash-up bin or a sweater tote, something like that. And this is all you need to start. You don't need anything expensive and you don't need anything fancy, just uh, some junk mail, shred it up. Um, and that's all you need. You got your worms, you got your bedding, and uh, since these are worms that are a little bit, I mean, the they came from an established system. I am going to give them a little bit of food. All right, so what I have here is a piece of melon that is four inches by two and a half inches. Just a piece of musk melon. And I am going to just put that in there and cover it up. That's more than enough for these guys, probably for a couple of weeks. Now, I will keep looking in on this bin. Um, so that we can follow its progress, but this is all you need for a bin. That's how much food that you know half a pound of wigglers are going to use for a week or two. Um, in the winter time, if it's cooler, then maybe less. All right, guys. Well, if you like this new series, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing, what I'm doing, it ring that little bell icon. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.